Hi, I'm Claude Jones from Claude Jones Presents. We're here with my co-host, lovely co-host. Let's see. And our topic today is going to be comedic. We're here with... Hekraim Mat Ibsau. Uh, and I'm uh, the uh, chair of the UNTAM committee for the Earth Center of New York City. Well, look, I'm glad to have you here. Let's explain some more about the Earth Center, explain about yourself, your your, your name, explain about your heritage, how you get to start it. Explain the whole thing about us for us. All right. Um, before I begin, uh, let me first uh, acknowledge uh, my ancestors um, for guiding me, protecting me, bringing me to this point. Um, I also want to acknowledge the prophet of the traditions, uh, Prophet Neb Dambala Musamor Denebig, who through his sacrifice and through his vision, brought uh, this Ntam knowledge uh, to the West uh, to basically uh, reawaken mankind, uh, humanity uh, in general, uh, to the uh, ancestral spirit and to the traditional ancestral paradigm. Um, I also want to acknowledge the Netaru, or the gods of the uh, divine world, um, for basically creating the existence and uh, maintaining the harmony we see within the existence. Um, let me first begin by uh, explaining my name a little bit, because um, the name is actually extremely important. Um, it's, it's one of the aspects of the human being, actually, because um, if you think about it, Everything that exists, we have a name for it. Um, and so, you know, that name is, you know, that's how you identify something. Mm -hmm. So your name, or someone's name, uh, is extremely important. And um, in the traditions in, uh, in Merita or, uh, or Africa, um, even the whole ceremony of coming up, uh, giving a child a name, that's a whole process uh, um, by which uh, you know the priest would actually uh, find out who the spirit is and um, what they're coming back to do, basically uh, what their destiny is, and then a name would be chosen so that each time this name is uttered, uh, it would remind the person of their destiny or the, the, the purpose they have on earth. And um, we all have a purpose. Um, so um, my name in particular, uh, which uh, I got when I graduated from the, uh, the first uh, level of the initiation uh, at the Earth Center, the per Ankh level, uh, my name is Hekraim, uh, my first name. And what it means is hek, the power of the netara is within me, hekraim. Um, uh, my last name uh, is maat ibsau, and it basically means the righteous heart of the netar sau. And sau is a netar of uh, knowledge and wisdom. So, um, you know, with that name, comes a lot of uh, responsibility. Um, you know, uh, there's also a reading you get when this name is presented to you. What kind of responsibilities do come with the names? Um, well, for me in particular, uh, with my name, um, it's a lot of uh, power being invested in me okay. uh, by my ancestors. So uh, that's the power, the heck part of the name, the mm -hmm. power of Ra. So a lot of power is being invested in me by my ancestors. Right. So um, that's a lot of responsibility uh, for me. So uh, <laughs> my f my uh, it's important for me to stay focused and to, uh, you know, keep growing spiritually. Right. Um, once I do that, then everything else will basically take care of itself. Um, so, so that's my focus at this point. Um, the Earth Center was an is an organization that was uh, 
founded by the prophet of the traditions, Neb Nabal Lamusa Mardenabig, uh, who was a Dogon high priest. Um, I'm sure our listeners are somewhat familiar with the Dogon people. Um, uh, they have come to light somewhat through their, uh, their outstanding knowledge of astronomy. Um, uh, they were the first people to speak of the Sirius star and to um, identify it uh, in the West, as far mm -hmm. as, you know, in, in popular culture in the West. Um, but the knowledge of the Sirius star has been around for over 75,000 years, okay, um, thousands of years. Um, and it's the basis, this knowledge of Sirius is formed the basis uh, for one of the things I wanted to uh, talk about today, uh, which is the uh, Kemetic Sidereal Calendar. Um, but um, we'll, we'll get to that later on. But I, I just wanted to speak a little bit about the Earth Center and um, what the objective and the goals are of the Earth Center. Um, the Prophet founded the institution as a vehicle to, by which to transmit um, traditional knowledge, uh, the traditional knowledge of our ancestors, uh, which they have kept and preserved for thousands of years. Um, he advocated on our behalf with his elders, with the leadership of his people, for the permission to actually bring this knowledge here to us in the West. So. It wasn't uh, a situation like it was just one person getting up and like, oh, I'm going to take this. No, he actually had the permission and the authority of all the other priests and all the elders, the kingship of his people. Um, so uh, when he came to Manu, which is, which is what we call um, um, the Americas, when he came to Manu, he had all of that behind him. Uh, he had a whole community, a whole nation behind him, really. Um, and his, his uh, mission was really to uh, reawaken humanity, really, um, to uh, mainly our original agenda, our, our, our original purpose, um, which is to, when we were, well maybe let me uh, go back a little bit, uh, to the 19th of Tehuti, uh, where humanity uh, were brought before the gods, and they asked us as humans, like, uh, what was our agenda? And we really didn't have an agenda at that point. We, we, the human brain cannot just come up with a thought that is not somewhat connected to something they've previously been exposed to. We can't just, our brain is not capable of just making up information. So at that point in our development, um, and based with, uh, faced with the, uh, the limitation of our brains, right? Um, at that point, uh, when we were brought before the divine world, uh, what we were seeing was the order and, uh, you know, the beauty of the divine world. And for us, being exposed to that at that point, we, we were like, well, that's what we want to do. We want to make that our agenda. We want to try to recreate the world of the gods. Um, so, and in order to be able to do that, um, the gods gave us uh, some basic guidelines. Um, and uh, in the traditions, those are known as the 77 commandments, mm -hmm. or the seven, seven, uh, uh, the code of human behavior. And it's basically uh, a list of things not to do. Uh, and it's basically a, a list of things you will not do if you're trying to be good, if you're trying to purify yourself 
and to reach this goal of trying to be divine. Right? So in trying to recreate the world of the gods, we are trying to make ourselves divine. And, and that is not an easy task. Um, and in, in the case of most spirits or most souls, it takes multiple lifetimes. Mm -hmm. right? Ask you a question now. Uh, what makes the spirituality of Kirman different? Is spirituality we got and spirituality, is it a religion or different? No, there's a difference between religion and spirituality. Um, spirituality is a technical, it's a technical uh, field. Um, a lot of people are not clear on this. Right? It's a technical field. Um, the things that the priests do in Merita, um, they're, we'll see them as rituals, but they're very technical. They're extremely technical, um, meaning that it's a science. It's not, uh, it's not a hocus pocus as it's portrayed to be. Right? It's actually a, a, a deep science. Um, what religion is, religion is uh, uh, an appeal to emotions. Religion is an appeal to someone's emotions. Right? Um, and, uh, and that's what religions are all about. Um, getting together, singing praises. Uh, it's more of an emotional outlet, more of an emotional uh, expression. Um, but for us in the traditions, um, we don't base our lives on emotions because we know emotions constantly change. So if you base your, your life on emotions um, or what appeals to your emotions, then you're not ha going to have a very stable life. Emotions change all the time. One minute you're happy, the next minute you're sad. Okay. Okay. Right. Good. Uh, so, so do you guys work on controlling those emotions? How do you work on controlling those emotions? Because some people are more emotional than others. So how do you get it to a level to where you can maintain it and separate? Well, yeah, I, I, it, that's a challenge for every human being. Right. Uh, dealing with emotions. Um, and the point is, you can't do without emotions. Um, if you know someone without emotions, uh, you probably don't like that person very much. <laughs> right? um, right. Uh, that'd be a very cold uh, person. Mm -hmm. um, so what it is, 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 is a balance. Okay. So what it is, is for the human being, uh, you have emotions, mm -hmm. and emotions are like pure motivation. Right. They want to make you do something. That's why the word emotion gets you moving, mm -hmm. it gets you in motion. Right? It's, it's the motivation to do something. But it's motivation that lacks discrimination. Right. It's just motivation to do something without that reasoning or that logic behind it. Mm -hmm. right? um, so how we approach it is, yes, you need emotions. Right? But the logic must always guide your emotions. Okay. Okay? So when, you're in, when you realize you're in, emo in an emotional state, mm -hmm. you never act or do anything from that state. Right. You try to get yourself out of that emotional state, mm -hmm. and then uh, you could actually reason. Um, because I mentioned one limitation of the human brain before. That's another aspect of the human brain as well. Okay? Um, we have a saying, uh, emotions don't think. Because what happens in the brain is, once you get emotional, right. the, 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 the reasoning part of your brain shuts off. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then it becomes like a pure motivation to do something, lacking that discrimination, right? So, um, and, you know, you don't really have to look far to find examples for this. I mean, you know, prisons are full of people who would tell you, like, uh, well, you know, man, I just got caught up in the moment, and, you know. Kind of like Trump. Something right. happened. Right. You know, <laughs> you know. Exactly like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is not to get to that space. <laughs> right. right? Uh -huh. So the, the, the point is to always guard against emotions. Don't let you need them, mm -hmm. right? But to balance it with, um, with, uh, with reason. Right. right? It's, it's, uh, the analogy we use in the tradition is like a horse and a rider type scenario. Mm -hmm. 
right? Um, you could think of emotions as being the horse, right? And 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 reason or logic uh, being the rider, the, um, being the rider, mm -hmm. right? Now, if if the rider just allows the horse to do whatever he wants to do, um, he needs the horse to get to some place. But if he just lets the the horse do what he wants to do, the horse is gonna go wherever he wants to go, right? Right. So he, as the rider, has to guide the horse to get him to where he wants to go, mm -hmm. right? It's the same thing with us as human beings. Right. We understand emotions. We see emotions, and we see that when we act in an emotional way, or we act from an emotional space, we usually end up uh, with consequences that are negative. <laughs> Most of it's the time. Right? So um, <coughs> what we have to do is realize that when we get into that sp the state, Right, and then try to uh, not act from that state, but to try to calm down. Because to realize as well that emotions, they constantly change. Okay. You might be raging mad right now, but, you know, somebody comes, starts talking to you, a soft word, da -da -da. or you just get uh, distracted. You're distracted by something else. Uh -huh. right. And you forgot about that. It's no longer an issue. So once you try to get yourself out of that state, before you uh, move forward. Oh, okay. Are you getting more questions for these? Let's ask them. Yeah, I kind of want to know more, like, about it, like, the, like more about the spiritual part of it all. Like, you said that um, that it's more technical in the spiritual verb than it is in the religious aspect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you said that. Um, See, religion is, is, is rooted in belief. Right. Belief, right? Um, if we were going to get married, let's say, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you asked me, right, right before we were going to get married, uh, do you love me? And I was like, well, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get married? No, definitely you don't not. Think so, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. So You're not it's, sure. It's, so. it's um, <laughs> belief has the element of doubt in there. Right. Okay. Uh, and and that's what uh, religions are about. Mm -hmm. It's belief. Uh, believe this. Uh, believe that. You you start asking hard questions, and immediately it gets back to. Belief. Oh, have faith. Oh, have... Because they can't answer these questions. They don't have these answers. Right. Right? So, um, but there's a, you know, there's a spiritual tradition that's hundreds of thousands of years old mm -hmm. where uh, they've been contemplating these questions and they've worked out. Uh, they've answered all these questions. Right? Um, and it took thousands of years. Uh, so observing humanity, observing uh, how human beings are, yeah. how we behave, you know, the nature of a human being, right? how, how, we, uh, how we act. And one, one key aspect of that is, uh, one key aspect of the nature of a human being which makes our original objective so challenging, our original objective being to, uh, to be divine, is that our very nature, by our very nature, we are corrupt and corruptible. Right? Uh, that's just how we are uh -huh. you know, as, as human beings. So, you know, it's very challenging, extremely challenging. But spirituality is all about facing the challenges and to, uh, to change your behavior, really. Uh, and that's the key difference between initiation mm -hmm. and uh, what we call initiation or what we call or, or what you might call education uh, in the modern sense. Right. Um, education in the modern sense is about it's really about training. Mm -hmm. Okay. You go to school and they're really training you to basically be a functional part of the society. system, right. or the shit system, as I would <laughs> <laughs> I like to call it. Right. But that's what they're training you to do, to be a functional part of a system. This education is 
focused on the individual. Okay. It's focused on the individual and uh, so that the individual could find their place in space and time. How do they fit in to the greater existence, the bigger scheme of things? Mm -hmm. So th that's the whole focus of this uh, education. It's about you. Everything in this education is about the individual and uh, the challenges they may face and, and you know, how they should approach this uh, task of uh, trying to you know, purify themselves. Okay. And I see here you have a comedic side roll calendar. Tell me more about comedic. Yeah, this, this is the comedic sidereal calendar, and um, yeah, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because uh, we've, we've just started the second month uh, in, the, um, in the comedic calendar. Um, this particular year, which is year 416, right, um, and uh, people might be wondering, like, uh, 416? Yeah. But as I mentioned before, this calendar is based on the cycle of the Sirius star, or the, uh, what we call the septet star, right? And For um, those that don't know what the Sirius star and the septet star, can you give me more detail on that? Mm. Or more information? Some people think of Sirius like a radio station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's, yeah. there's actually, uh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think it's also called the... Uh, Dog star? Dark star? Yeah. Dog. Dog, dog star. Dog star. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sirius is actually, I think, one of the brightest stars in the sky. Okay? Uh -huh. uh, and it's close by the Orion constellation, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the so this calendar is based on the cycle of the, uh, the Sirius star. And it's it's based on what's called the helical rising of of Sirius, and what it means is like it's a three-way alignment between Sirius, the Sun, and the Earth. So those when those three uh, bodies align, right. right, that's the that's the beginning of a new cycle, uh. right. So it's been it's been 400 and and at, at the beginning of each cycle we go back to zero basically. So it's the year 416, so it's been 416 years since the last helical rise of Ceres, right? Um, one uh, interesting thing to note, normally the New Year's Day for the sidereal calendar is actually September 11th, normally. Uh -huh. uh, if the year is a leap year, however, like this year, 416 is a leap year, um, then it actually falls on September 10th. Um, but normally, in every other year, it falls on September 11th. All right. But this is the, uh, the calendar for this year, which was started on uh, September 10th, uh, 2016. Oh, yeah, hold um, up. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, this first page is, is speaking about all the original Kemetic holy days, right? Holy days, which is where you get the corrupted uh, concept of a holiday. Mm. Holy day, holiday. Okay. Right? But originally we had holy days, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> which we commemorated. So there's a list of the, the different holy days. And then this other page is basically just... Uh, an explanation of, of the calendar, the different aspects of the calendar. Um, uh, so you would know how to uh, read the calendar. Uh, the sidereal year, or this uh, seasonal year, we call this a seasonal year. Uh -huh. um, and four seasonal years make up uh, a sidereal year. Right? So, uh, the four years together make up a sidereal year. That's why you see these four years here on the front. And okay. this is the last year of this sidereal year, right? And this is a leap year. Um, now, the, the whole cycle of uh, Sirius lasts one 
2,460 years. Okay, so you'll have a helical rising of Sirius, or you'll have this three-way alignment every 1,460 years. Uh -huh. And the what you'll find is that our ancestors, they basically looked at this. They, they, they put a lot of uh, time into this, looking at the night sky, looking at all the different uh, heavenly bodies, the different um, cycles, and tried to find one that uh, was actually uh, perfect uh, in terms of keeping track of time for us here on the earth, okay? So it's interesting how we have this notion of time, right? But we get this notion of time based on motion. We see things moving, uh -huh. right? Or like you'd, you'd see uh, the day come, then the night come, then the day come again, uh -huh. right? But this is all because of the motion of, 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 of the celestial bodies, right? A question. Uh, that ca the calendar we got now for the celestial area, that's the original calendar we're supposed to be going by, correct? Yes. Actually, um... Because the calendar we got now, nothing like that calendar. The calendar we use now is called the Gregorian calendar, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that came out of what's called the Julian calendar. So before the Gregorian calendar, you had the Julian calendar. Um, all these calendars are named after popes, by the way, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting, right? Because you think time, you think what? Science? You right. think, uh, exactly. uh -huh. right? Time division, mm -hmm. it should be very systematic, very methodical, uh -huh. very technical, right? Uh -huh. You're counting time. But it's the Vatican that issues these things, okay? So already there you kind of like huh yeah it's uh, you know julian and uh gregorian calendar but what happened with the julian the original julian calendar they had was it got to a point where it was so inconsistent like it got to a point where around the time where they would have easter right it got to the point where uh it wasn't it, it was obvious to everyone that this was not the right time like it was, it was just off. The calendar was up. Uh -huh. So then uh, they actually, uh, you know, they did some some work and uh, some calculations. <laughs> then they claimed they fixed it with the Gregorian calendar. Uh -huh. But the Gregorian calendar is still off. Okay, it's interesting to note that this calendar, the sidereal calendar, because it is based on the Sirius star. And Sirius moves with the procession. Uh, like, what you're looking at here on the front of this is actually the original map of the sky. This is a, a drawing of the original map of the sky. So like the, the Mandela of, uh, Mandala of uh, Dendera uh, mm -hmm. poster. Uh, the original map of the sky showing the different um, constellations and... Uh, the different uh, so heavenly of the bodies, Big Dipper, and all that stuff. You have all these. Right. So they they right. they they. What, what's the term they use? Anthropomorphized. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, they they put you know shapes and had you know personalities to them. Mm -hmm. um, so all the different uh, constellations now. The Earth, because it's, it has a wobble, it has a tilt to the axis, right? When it's moving around, uh, wobbling around, right? It, uh, it actually moves. The constellations form like a fixed ring around us, right? As far as we are concerned, we don't see them move, right? And when I'm talking about the constellations now, I'm talking about, you know, uh, you relate this to the zodiac. Right. So, like the different constellations that represent the different, uh, the, you know, different signs of the zodiac, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll relate that to the original calendar uh, in a minute as well. Um, so, 
we kind of move within this kind of circle that's kind of set, kind of a set background. So we kind of use this to track how we're moving, right? Because we're moving against a kind of a, a stable background. And what we find is that the Earth, you have what's called the precession of the, uh, the equinox. Or uh, on the equinox, the uh, sun rises. Uh, after a certain period of time, the sun will rise in another constellation. It will do that for a certain period of time, then it will move on to another uh, constellation. This is related to the ages. You hear to talk about the ages, the changing of the age, uh -huh. the yeah. age of Aquarius, the yes. right. age of Pisces, yeah. all of that. That's all related to that. But because Sirius kind of moves with the procession, this calendar does not have to be adjusted for the seasons, ever. Mm. Like it doesn't have to be adjusted for the seasons ever. So you see like the Julian calendar, mm -hmm. after a while it went off, Every year had changed. to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Even the Gregorian calendar, there's a certain time it's going to have to be adjusted. So like your birthday, your birthday, my birthday is Tuesday, September 6th. The next year my birthday will be the same on the same date, basically, right? The calendars, and it works like my birthday is like today. I say a Tuesday or area. When that, when that calendar there, my birthday don't change. It's the same date as this year. The way, the way it works? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever your, your, your birthday is, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same, same. date next same year. Same day next year. Right. right? Same day, same week? Yeah. Day of the week, I mean. Yeah. Like. That never change. Right. And, and, and that's, that, that, that is related to, uh, that has importance, a lot of significance, actually. When you were born. It's intimacy. Right, because if you look at the, uh, the, uh, the calendar here, what you notice is that each, each, each decan, what we call a decan, uh, or meteru. Meteru is the, is the medu term, actually. Mm -hmm. Meteru meaning it's, it's 10 days, right? 10 days met, a week. Met being 10. Oh, so we have 10 days in a week. Right. So uh, it's 10 days for the week. Um, the the, the, the meteru has a name, or the week has a name, mm -hmm. right? And there are two divinities that rule over this time. For this particular month, there's also a divinity that governs this whole time period. Okay? And for this particular month, it's uh, the Netert Aishat. Okay? And Aishat, or Isis, right, or Aset, um, is uh, it's like the uh, epitome of. Uh, Pure love, unconditional love, right? mm -hmm. like uh, motherly love, right? Uh, mm -hmm. She represents the mother, right? Um, so she control. She uh, rules over, governs this whole time period. So if you're born in this first week, you have the characteristics of Aisha. They're going to influence you. And also the characteristics of these other two divinities here as well. Oh, they okay. will also affect you if you're born in this time period. Okay. Eh? So D, what, what month are you born? June. Let's see, let's see what D is. Yeah. So <laughs> let's go to June real quick. Come on, September 6th. So I'm a deity. You're a deity? Oh, deity, yes. Come on, September 6th. June? What day in June, you say? June 24, huh? June 24. Okay. Right. So, Saturday, June 24th. Okay. So, hmm. so the, the Nater that governs this whole time period, right, is, uh, is Nefertum. And Nefertum is a, is a creator god, right? Um, but he, he symbolizes one characteristic of Nefertum is uh, he's always looking for new ways to approach, uh, approach things, right? So, he, you know, he's comfortable with diversity. Versatile. Yeah, very versatile, right? So he's always looking for new ways to uh, approach uh, life and the existence, right? Um, and you'd also be governed by Amon. Um, 
Now, if you look at the calendar, you have uh, the name of the Natur in Medu, mm -hmm. right, in hieroglyphs. Yes, it is. And then a, li a little description about the Natur. And then underneath, it says, you know, Nefertum uh, rules over the month of Peninit. Uh, and then it gives you the sacred animals. If you're born in this time period, so for example, like yourself, you should not eat snake. You should not kill or consume any of these animals <coughs> because they share a similar kind of energy as yourself. Okay. Right? Um, for example, snake, vulture, catfish, and sacred bull. Uh, really. <laughs> you, you don't really kill those a lot. But <laughs> snake, you ate snake before? No. no okay. Right. So well no I snake. Just held no a snake. snake for the first time the other day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The sentiment six. And, and how was that for you? Holding a snake. Yeah. It was the creepiest thing I've ever done in my life, but it was awesome. See? It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it was. Yeah, no, she 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 has a connection to like, to that animal. Like he like wrapped himself and came up. It was so creepy. <laughs> Like it you. was so creepy, <laughs> but it was awesome. Like but based you. on your energy and mm -hmm. the time you were born, you, right. you have you have a connection with the snake. Yes, yeah, so, so September sixth, September sixth, September sixth, September sixth. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're in the month of. Uh, you share the birthday with Heru, my friend. <laughs> Deity, God, that's right. You share a birthday with uh, Heru Er. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you're actually in the very last month. So the sidereal calendar, it has 13 months. Okay. Instead so it's 12 12. months of 30 days. Right. Right. And then a 13th month of, uh, in this case, it's six days because this is a leap year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, but normally it would be five days. Okay. Right. Wow. What, what is this? What's the 13th month considered? to be on a regular calendar. On a regular calendar? Yeah, like on on the Gregorian calendar? Yeah. Uh, well it would be it doesn't it doesn't exist. Yeah, it, it would be right. it would be part of September. Okay. So they just separated September into two kind of to make it thirteen months. No. In a sense. Actually if you look at the calendar itself right. on this very last page mm -hmm. It actually tells you the story of how these five days came about. Uh -uh. Okay. Originally, in the creation or in the existence, mm -hmm. uh, there there was a time when there was only 360 days. Okay. Okay. And um, actually, that story is like an aspect of the comedic uh, cosmogony mm -hmm. um, that some people might find interesting, but. Uh, in and it's, it's funny, I was just listening to the prophet actually speak about it um, on a CD uh, <laughs> in the car on my way over here. Um, but uh, what happened was uh, during the, uh, uh, you know, the very beginning of, uh, of the existence, um, you had a, a, a male principle, Geb, the earth, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you had Nut, uh, a feminine principle, which uh, represented the sky. Right? So Nut is like the goddess of the sky. Geb is uh, god of the earth. Right? So one's a male principle, a female principle. And in the very beginning, they were together. So if you think about it, uh, a male principle and a, a feminine principle, naked, Laying on t you know, one together, naked, nothing separating them. It's only natural, you know, procreation. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, that happened. Now, the great Netar Ra, he was upset because it, it wasn't in the plan at that point in time. Okay, so uh, from his perspective, it's like uh, because the the Netar of the first Trinity, 
see that's the thing when you when you talk about spirituality it's like every time you want to touch on something you yeah, have to go back set the foundation right. for mm -hmm. it before people can really appreciate it but the whole existence was created by the first trinity right uh, and the first trinity consists of ra imin mm -hmm. or amen mm -hmm. and ta. Uh, and ta right? <coughs> now um when they created uh, the existence, as I said, it was like a perfect situation. But that situation where you had uh, Nut and Geb together, they procreated. Ra thought they were in a rush to procreate. And the point I wanted to make about the, the gods of the First Trinity, they're very uh, much in control of everything. Okay? So the fact that uh, Nut and uh, Geb uh, seem to be like rushing to procreate. You know, Ra, you know, he felt that that wasn't, uh, it wasn't the time for it. So what he did was he decided to like uh, banish them from each other, like separate them. So he separated the sky from the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is after the procreation has taken place now. So now, Nut is pregnant. Um, now, this is the scenario where you have a perfect situation at this point. You had 360 days. Right. And you know, 360 degrees in a circle. Mm -hmm. right? So you had a perfect situation where it's like you had a perfect circular rotation. Right? It was like a perfect existence. But Nut, now the punishment that Ra put uh, on Nut was that she could not have her children. She was pregnant. But he said, Ra said she could not have any of her children in any one of the 360 days. So she had a problem. She had a problem. She was pregnant. She wanted to give birth, right? And if you think about it, this is about the destiny of human beings. That's what the story is about. Mm -hmm. It's about the destiny of human beings. So this was a major problem. Right? So what Nut did was she appealed to the, 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 the Inuit of gods or the pantheon of gods and uh, appealed to the gods. And what they did was they can't violate the ruling of another god. Right. So he said, okay, you can't have your children in any of the 360 days. But what the, uh, the Inuit of, uh, of gods did was they said, okay, what we'll do is we'll create another five days. And uh, in those five days, you could have your children. Okay? So five days were added to the already existing 360. But that is what now has caused the tilt in the uh, axis. In the axis of the Earth, right? And now we have a rotation around the Sun that's elliptical, not circular, right? So now, and if you think about it, these are all the things that introduce seasons that tilt in the, in the axis. So that brings about the notion of cycles. This, this, this notion of uh, the cyclic nature of the, the becoming or the existence, right? And that happens with uh, the birth of the first of Nut's children, uh, Wusser, right? who is uh, considered like our ancestral godfather. Right? So um, Wusser is responsible for the cyclic nature of becoming. And you see how I just explained it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was the first child to be born to Nut. Right? So when you see the seasons come and the seasons change, it's because of Wusser. And Wusser was the only netter god to choose death to be part of his existence. Like, he's a netter, he's a god, he's still immortal. Right. But he chose to die, but always to resurrect. 
So you see now why we call him the ancestral godfather. He basically set the way for us. It's the same thing we do. We born, we die. We resurrect. Right? We resurrect. So we always resurrect. Right? Um, so he set the, 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 the path for us in that sense. So we owe a lot to us uh, um, as humans. Yeah. Now explain the resurrect part. Resurrect. Some people like, like resurrect, how we resurrect. They want to know, like, explain that part area. We may know, but maybe other people don't understand. Well, well fundamentally, <coughs> I mean, uh, on a very fundamental level, you resurrect through your seed, really. Um, so we resurrect uh, through our children okay. um, on a very fundamental level. Now, there are two aspects to it. There's uh, resurrection, there's reincarnation. Okay, so, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, I don't know if you want me to delve a little bit more into that, but... Um, yeah, like, how do you mean you resurrect into your children? Like, what do you mean by that? Well... Or by your children? Can you... point to anything about you uh, that you cannot somehow point back to your mother or your father like that's where it came from okay. is there anything about you you could point to like well this is me that, that didn't come from them give or take <laughs> there, there's, really there's I mean, nothing man. the blood right. you have came from them uh -huh. you know the way you look all of that, mm -hmm. right? All of that. It, it you know, it the comes genetics. from them, right? Um, so, this 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 uh, this notion um, of resurrection, right, um, which is now being uh, put to us uh, by modern day religion, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a certain aspect, but it's something that goes on every day. Every day, people are born, right? Yeah. So every day, there's resurrection going on. And what it is, is uh, if you get deeper into it, you re understand that uh, to be born here in this world, this physical dimension, means to actually die in the spiritual dimension. Hmm. So death and birth are like, they're like flip sides of the coin. It's just like when, you, when you're born here in this world, you die in the spiritual dimension. Right. So in essence, you are actually an ancestor that was here before but decided to come back again for a reason because we have this great objective right. which is to become divine and most of the times it's going to take multiple lifetimes okay I'll tell you what uh, you can tell people where to contact the Earth Center and also um, number and where they're located at. Also, they want some more questions about it and phone numbers, area, whatever, and tell them also. All right. Um, you could uh, contact the Earth Center. We are online at the earthcenter.org. Um, you could also reach out to the New York Earth Center. Um, let see if I find that number real quick. Oh, deep. How you enjoying yourself? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so, 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 you enjoyed the topic of the show today? Uh, right, so the, uh, yeah, you could also contact the New York Earth Center at 347-529-1399. Um, and as I said, you could also check us out online at uh, www.theearthcenter.org. Um, online, you'll find uh, the calendar. You'll also find a copy of uh, a quarterly publication that we, we publish uh, through the Earth Center. Um, it's called The uh, Rising Firefly. And um, this is probably the only uh, chemetic uh, publication you'll find uh, being published in the West. 
Mm. How many earth centers are there so far located? Like, well, how many earth centers? Earth centers, we have, have earth center in Chicago, which is the headquarters for Manu. We have New York. We have uh, newly opened in Baltimore. We have a earth center in San Diego, Los Angeles. Um, we have two schools in the UK right now, one in Birmingham, one in uh, London. And um, of course, we have the uh, the international headquarters, which is in uh, Ouagadougou, uh -huh. uh, Burkina Faso. And that's in Maritau. That's, that's in yeah. That's that's in, uh, we'll call that. Burkina Faso in uh, in Maritau. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. See, we had a, we had a lot of good topics today. We had a lot of good topics, and I hope you'll like, like the topic you talk about. And we do a lot of good stuff here. So, D. Being your, my co-host, what you think about the topic? I think it was very interesting and intriguing. I think I definitely want to learn a little more about what he was talking about. But um. no, and uh, and as I said, th this is open to all humanity. This is this right. is for all of us. Um, this is not about uh, white, black, or uh, you know shades of color thing. You know. This is about basically. We taking our lives, really, taking back our lives, you know, as individuals. Right. Because mm -hmm. the system, as far as the system is concerned, you're a number, a digit, uh, you know, a resource to be exploited, really. Mm -hmm. so. They try to kind of have you walking around, doing the same thing, believing the same thing, kind of like machines. Yeah. yeah. yeah Matrix. I mean? Yeah. In yeah. the you're in the matrix world. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, you know, the system puts your mind in a box. You know. Yeah, yeah it, it does. They, they try to control everything that you believe in, everything that you see, everything that you hear, everything that you do. So. That's how they control you. It's a concept. Yeah, really? The, the concept area. I mean, that's basically what it run down. I started away from the beginning to end. It comes, everything starts from somewhere. Right. And in the history of time, they change it and change it. You don't know where you begin or where you end, you know. So I mean, it's it's it's, it's a big world out there, but a lot of times we don't know where we come from sure. to know the concepts of it, areas. But uh, it's been a very good show. And so I'm Claude Jones presents, and I'm hoping my co-host here gonna be doing a lot of more shows with me right now. <laughs> and I think we have a very good time. And matter of fact, ask a question about yourself. Explain where you come from. What's your I nationality? am Egyptian. I was uh, born and raised out here, however my parents are Egyptian. I used to go out there every summer until about six years ago. Oh yeah? Yeah. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of foods without there? What kind of stuff? Oh, it's, it's, I mean it all goes down to Arabic, so it's like different kind of Arabic foods. It's just, you know, like um, Egypt, Lebanon, Yemen, they're all Arab. They just have different minor changes in their cultures and, mm. and different dialects. But they all basically believe in the same thing. Mm -hmm. They just live it a little differently than mm -hmm. others, just like Colombians or Puerto Ricans or mm -hmm. Dominicans. They're all Spanish, but they just have their different mm -hmm. concepts of mm -hmm. things and their different dialects. Now, the food out there is very nice for the food out there. So. No, the food's so. it's good, but I'm a picky eater, so I'm like oh, the yeah? worst person <laughs> to talk about food with. The worst. They growing up, they swore I wasn't Egyptian because of the way I eat. So <laughs> it's. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, yeah. so thing, you know? Now, now it's, I heard it, it's real, I'm going to say something really weird. Is couscous out there? Couscous, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I heard it's a couscous <laughs> thing. I, I'm like, okay. It's a dish out there. And they're like, what, what is a couscous? What is couscous? Go, I'm here. Hey, everybody. I'm like, you know. It's kind of like quinoa. Like, you be back at like old comedy show. We go Africa store. We have a couscous. <laughs> so, you know, so what is it like? You hands. You dip it. No, no, it's it's a food. It's kind of like quinoa. Similar, yeah, oh, yeah? It's similar to quinoa. Yeah. Oh, God, I hear this couscous thing. I'm like, what is couscous? Yeah, yeah, so it, it's, I, it's, I, 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 I will try to make it, but I don't know. I don't know what. How, what is it? <laughs> YouTube. Everything's on YouTube uh, cool, now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they see, show you how to make see, it. I like it. You, you can find a recipe there. Yeah. yeah she's gonna be the next. She's gonna be the next show on a, a cooking. <laughs> You're looking at the next host, her uh, own show, the cooking show, my show. She's going to be cooking that. You're going to cook couscous. <laughs> uh, I got to learn how to cook couscous to cook that. Next show, cooking couscous. Uh -oh. <laughs> with D. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get ready, D. <laughs> I'm putting your next show will be cooking couscous. But well, I definitely enjoy my time. It's true.
Peace, bro. Peace. Yeah, Ilya, now, what's the name? How you say <laughs> goodbye and hello in, in uh, Madhu? Uh, you greet each other by saying Ujjayi. 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 Yeah. How about saying goodbye? How you say that? Uh, Iri Haru. Iri Haru. Iri Haru. So that, that, I want you. I just want you to say to the guests. Tell them greeting. I'm going to say the guests to greet. Ujjayi. Say it again. Ujjayi. Ujjayi. How you spell that? Ujjayi. Uh, most people spell it U U J A H E E. Okay. How you spell Iri Haru? Uh, you could spell it E R E H E R U. So Iri Haru. I-R-I-H-E-R-U. Because if I don't get t-shirts made up like that, I can hardly spell it. R-H-E-R-W. It, 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 it varies. <laughs> it's, it's phonetic. Uh -huh. The spelling is phonetic. Oh, phonetic, okay. Because yeah, yeah. I want to make sure I get the right name and how to spell that correctly so I tell the people out there, get the t-shirt made up in the area, I'll make sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I have the wrong t-shirt, we'll spell it the wrong way, you know? <laughs> I won't be doing good. I won't be doing good. <laughs> so I got to make sure I know how to spell it correctly. You know, I got to look at my books. Mm -hmm. And definitely, so the right terminology for a hieroglyphics is Madhu, right? Yes. That's the right terminology. And over That's here, the for the language, yes. Madhu. And this country was called Manu. Manu. Manu was America. See, you, you learn some area. Okay. All right. So what was, I'm going to give a moment, what was the basic traditional food? Uh, is, being comedic, is that like a vegan area of comedic? Um... Hmm. The cultures in, in Merita are, um, they're not necessarily vegan as you would put it for it here. They eat meat, mm -hmm. but the meat is not something that they eat like on a daily basis. You know, like here you eat meat like on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they only eat meat like when they do certain offerings. Okay. Like they do certain offerings. They, they they sacrifice an animal, mm -hmm. then you know they all partake in in, in, in that offering. Okay. Um, but for the most part, it's you know healthy grains, fruits, uh, nuts, you know uh, cereals, you know real real simple okay. uh, real simple diet. All right. Well, uh, we had a good time this show. I'll show about the end right now, and I, I learned a lot. And every I learned on the show, we know how to reach you and to contact you on Earth Center. And I'm pretty sure we have a lot of calls for the area because it's very, very interesting. So I thank you for being our guest today, Ilya Ru, Ilya Ru with an E R, and yeah, Ilya. thank you uh, for having me, and um, it was a pleasure. And it definitely was. Now you Ilya. said D. Ilya Ru. Ilya Haru. 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 Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Tune in next week for Claude Jones Show, Tuesdays at 8:30 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>